Hello, this is David Gilmore with another what you need to know about how to run a furnace and a well pump when the grid goes down. I'm replying to two questions posted today and a, and a couple days ago. First question is from Falling Disciples 938. They ask, why can't you run your well pump? Uh, this question comes from my video that has over a million views, which is called Do Not Buy Solar, Do This Instead, Save Thousands uh, Mango Power Station. So I'll link to that video down below here. Actually, I have several videos, many of them from customers. Actually, I think most of them are from customers with their reviews about their uh, use of the mangoes. But I'll link to those videos down below this video. So why can't uh, I mention my well in my video, I can't run my well pump on a single mango power station. So the mango power stations are a battery backup system. So when the grid goes down, you can run 120 and 240 volt appliances. So that comment or that question comes from me saying I cannot run my well pump with one mango power station. But when you have two mango power stations linked together with the E-Link cable, that takes both inverters, puts the 120 here and the 120 here together so you get 240. And then yes, I can run my well pump or you can run your well pump, your 240 volt well pump. Uh, the answer to the question is yes, I can run my well pumps because when I have those two mango power stations connected together, I do get 240 volts and I can run my well pump. So that's how you run your well pump when the grid goes down. Very important to have water when the grid goes down. My son had a direct lightning strike on his property and it blew out his well pump charge controller. That's why it's important to have an EMP shield between the well pump and the charge controller in addition to the one that you have coming in from the grid to protect your well pump charge controller. So for several days, a little less than a week before he could get his new charge controller installed, he was hand pumping from the well. And when you have five people in the house, that's a lot of pumping. That's a lot of pumping, uh, especially for primarily for toilets. So uh, he says, make sure that you have protection from an EMP hit or from a lightning strike. And I recommend the EMP shield. I will have a link to the EMP shield below this video where you can get a $50 discount on getting one for your house, for the power coming in from the grid to protect from that surges or strikes that way. And one from your well pump to your well pump controller so that doesn't blow out. Next question comes from a user CI1KZ so forth. Uh, run your furnace on a power pack? Question mark. And how do you plug your furnace into the power pack? My furnace is hardwired. There is no plug to plug into the power pack. Yes. So this is where I also mentioned in this video that you can connect this to your circuit breaker box. And that's what I actually recommend. And that's what I've done with my mango power stations. I actually have two mango power stations and two expansion batteries connected to an automatic transfer switch connected to my circuit breaker panel. I have four 15 amp circuit breakers that I can automatically power from my mango power stations. And so when the grid goes down, I'm not running extension cords. I already have the furnace blower plugged into the one of those four 15 amp circuit breakers and the furnace blower is only 120 volts. So just going to Google and doing a quick search here. How many watts does the furnace blower use? It depends whether or not you have a standard fan motor or if you're operating with a variable speed motor, which I highly recommend. The standard is about 400 watts per hour, but the high efficiency variable speed models can deliver at about 75 watts per hour, less than a refrigerator. So yes, you can keep your house snuggy warm if you've got a gas or propane furnace and a, a high efficiency variable speed motor. Now you can either use the mango automatic transfer switch. So when the grid goes down within 20 nanoseconds, the mango disconnects from the grid, transfers power from the mango to those four 15 amp circuit breakers. Or you can put in a generator transfer switch into your circuit breaker box. And if you have two mangoes, you can power both leg one and leg two. Or you can put in a 10, 15 amp transfer switch, which is what I recommend if you're not using the automatic one. That way there's no extension cords running through the house. Your essential items, your refrigerator, your freezers, your furnace, lights, TV for news and entertainment and so forth, 
are all being powered by the mango through your circuit breaker box. Just like if you had a generator plugged into your circuit breaker box, but without having to run a generator or use fuel. Hopefully this information has helped you to learn how you can power your 240 volt well and your other appliances, including your hardwired appliances, when the grid goes down. If you haven't seen the other videos about the Mango Power battery backup, please click the link below. And of course, if you have any questions at all, I'm here to help. I give out my personal cell phone number. You can give me a call, and I'm glad to answer any questions you might have about the Mango Power Station. I own three of them. Two of them, plus the expansion batteries and the automatic transfer switch, runs my entire 40x60 shop, my 32 security cameras, my water heater, my fuel pump, uh, lights, outlets, and so forth. All on four 15 amp circuit breakers. I love it. And I've had 100% uptime in the year that it's been running my 40x60 shop. If you appreciate this kind of information, please take a second, click the like and the share button, and make sure that you uh, subscribe to the channel. And when you click subscribe, you need to click it again to make the bell black in order to get notifications every time I upload a new video. This is David Gilmore, known as LDS Prepper, reminding you, if you are prepared with battery backup, you shall not fear when the grid goes down.